In a previous video, I replaced the Jetson Bolt Pro's stock 36 volt battery with a higher capacity version. In the process of performing this upgrade, the battery compartment's inadequate size required modifications which included cutouts to make room for the battery and wires. Today, I'd like to replace the undersized compartment with a DIY one that should fit all of its contents. See how I DIY a new compartment next. To start, I'll need to create a template from the existing compartment, then work from there to create the new compartment. I felt the easiest way to do this is to trace the existing compartment onto cardboard, then modify the trace template till I get to what I want for the new compartment. So this trace template is where I'll start from. Having it on cardboard makes adding or trimming changes onto what's already there a lot easier. The stock compartment fits within the Jetson's frame with a fairly large gap between the compartment and frame. For the new compartment, I like to use up all of the space that the stock one does not. To start, I'm extending the stock template by 3 8 of an inch around its entire perimeter. To do this, I'm using a 3 8 inch thick piece of wood to mark short lines all the way around the template. The only tool I have to cut this template out from the cardboard is a razor blade that I removed from a box cutter. I'll cut the template out, carefully following the line with the razor. This shouldn't be too hard to do, just slow going. The template I cut out was still quite a bit smaller than needed to fill the space within the frame. To make it easier to get the sizing more accurate, I cut the template into three sections. I then took each section and worked on trimming just that piece so it accurately matches the contour of the frame. After trimming all three pieces more accurately, I recombined them back into one and ended up with this. It's glued and taped together to make sure it doesn't move even a little. As you can see in this test fit of the template within the frame, the fit is close and I purposely left about a 1 16 inch gap around the template's perimeter. I want just enough space around the edges to allow for the thickness of what I'll be using to create the new compartment. I have yet to decide on whether the compartment will be plastic or metal. I've transferred the cardboard template onto a cleaner piece of cardboard and traced out three templates in the wood. This will be the pieces I'll combine to create a mold that'll be as thick as the compartment will be. Here's the first of many cuts I'll be doing to create the mold. I'll show bits and pieces of the cutting and sanding throughout this process. I'm basically cutting enough pieces of the same template to glue together into a 3.5 inch thick mold. From that, I'll probably test creating compartments out of plastic and metal, then see how things go from there. I've prepped the three templates with spacers on two of them so that when they're combined, the total thickness is just over three and a half inches. I've marked them as top, 
middle and bottom for assembly purposes and also as a reminder so I can tell which side of the template the spacer is glued to even when they're assembled. The table saw's tabletop and fence will align the edges of the compartment templates. This should keep the three pieces aligned on the X and Y axes. The carpenter's square will keep the length of the compartment perpendicular to the vertical Y axis of the fence. I'll use a combination square to keep the height of the compartment perpendicular to the horizontal X axis of the tabletop. With all of the pieces aligned accurately, I can then clamp them all together in preparation to secure them permanently. I'm using multiple clamps to ensure the pieces have as little chance as possible from being accidentally jostled out of square. I'll check and recheck the alignment and loosen and tighten the clamps, making fine adjustments until I can get all the alignments as accurate as possible. I'm securing the three template pieces together using 3 inch square drive screws screwed in from each side of the mold. Because the screws are so long and the MDF wood I'm using is so hard, I'll drill the pilot hole almost to the size of the screw shaft. I also have to countersink the hole so the head of the screw will rest below the surface of the wood. Last but not least, I'm also rubbing some candle wax onto the screw to help it screw into the hole more easily. A screw of this length being screwed into MDF will probably still have a lot of resistance, but the wax helps a lot. This is the completed mold. It's pretty solid and maybe the only caveat about it being so solid is it's kinda heavy. I'd say it's roughly 7 to 10 pounds. I like how it's turned out and the edges do seem well aligned, which will be important when creating the compartments out of different materials. I was actually going to start working on the first of my attempts to create a compartment, but because this video is already pretty long, I'm instead going to call it a day and end this video with the completion of the mold. At this point, I've had more ideas I want to try for compartments other than just the plastic and metal versions. I'm kind of excited to start working on something, but I may even make a cardboard one to start just to do an initial mock-up before doing an actual permanent one. I'm sure a lot of you can use this mold to make your own versions of replacement Jetson Bolt Pro battery compartments. If you do, I hope you put a video out on YouTube, or if you're on Facebook, there's a Jetson Bolt Pro group that I'm sure would appreciate some photos of your creation. I'm done for now. As usual, leave your questions and comments in the comments section below. That's all I have for now, and I'll catch you in the next video.